Boss fights, where some of the most iconic moments in video game history take place. These fights are specifically designed to be greater than the rest, and most of the time, they are. Unfortunately, boss fights in the Pikmin series are either a hit or miss. Some bosses require little to no skill at all and can easily be cheesed, but other boss fights are very well thought out and make the player actually have to think and strategize before they act. Pikmin 3 is a great example on how to do bosses the right way. There's five main bosses who all have different mechanics and gameplay loops, and a smaller roster of mini-bosses scattered around the game. In Pikmin 4, we have a whopping 28 bosses. That is including mini-bosses, but it's still a lot. And with the oversaturation of bosses in Pikmin 4, some of them just feel like a lazy copy to get that number up. But on the other hand, Pikmin 4 introduces some of the most intricate bosses in the franchise's history. So I took it upon myself to rank every boss in Pikmin 4. I'll be ranking each boss based off of three main things. Design, where I look at how aesthetically creative a boss and their respective environments are. Challenge, if the fight genuinely makes the player have to change up their strategy and adapt to the boss. And Fun, it is a game at the end of the day, so if the battle isn't enjoyable, what's the point in even playing? Each boss will receive a score of 10 in each category, adding up to a total of 30, because that's how math works. If the boss has an upside or downside that doesn't fit into any of the three main categories, I'll be giving bonus or taking away points wherever I feel is necessary. Before I start off the list, I want to talk about all the big enemies. The Master Hop, the Jumbo Ball Borb, the Mama Shear Grub, the Titan and Blizzarding Blowhog, and this guy whose name I'm definitely going to butcher. They're all just bigger versions of regular enemies, and yeah, they have a few new attacks and more health, but all in all, they didn't need to be in the game. Other than the Master Hop appearing at the end of the C4 Resort, I don't really consider them bosses, but the Pikmin Wiki does, so here you go. Moving on to the real list now. In dead last place, we have the Puffy Bullhog. According to the Pikmin Wiki, these guys are bosses too, but I don't really care for them. The best thing about them is their design, and it's not even that cool. Fighting them is way too easy and pretty boring, making them the worst boss in the game. Our next spot on the list goes to the Bug-Eyed Cromad. Back in Pikmin 3, I wasn't the biggest fan of this guy, and even in Pikmin 4 as a mini-boss, he's pretty lackluster. Design-wise, he's just a giant crab that lives in a hole, and fighting him is as simple as throwing Pikmin at his eyes until he falls onto his back. The Bug-Eyed Cromad is not a serious threat, and fighting him is pretty repetitive. The Porcolian takes up our next spot as another underwhelming boss. However, unlike the Bug-Eyed Cromad, he has a few redeeming factors. Starting off with his design, if you've watched my top 10 ugliest enemies, you'll know how hideous I think this thing is. But just because he's ugly, doesn't mean I think he's poorly designed. Whoever created this thing has thought of ideas I could only dream of. In terms of fighting him, the gameplay is pretty basic and it's easy to cheese, so I can only rank him so high. Y'all are gonna hate me for this one, but our number 19 spot goes to the Giant Bread Bug. Arguably one of the most beloved bosses in the Pikmin community ranks so low. Design-wise, I don't care what you say, he's a 10. But there's literally no challenge when fighting him. Like, at all. In Pikmin 4, instead of having to play tug-of-war with the giant bread bug, you can just throw 10 Pikmin on his back and crush it like a paper bag. And say what you want, but I don't find that too enticing. It's a shame the giant bread bugs are even more of a joke than they were back in Pikmin 2. One of the biggest disappointments in Pikmin 4 was the Emperor Ball Blacks. When I first fought them in the Kingdom of Beasts, I thought they were nerfed to the ground like in Pikmin 2. But the new Scream Attack caught me by surprise, and that initial boss fight was kinda difficult since there was two of them. But a one-on-one -on -one fight is a walk in the park if prepared for properly. Design-wise, I was never the biggest fan of how he looked. Even in the original game, he was just... old. The Emperor Ball Blacks is alright. Luckily, the Sovereign Ball Blacks makes up for all the disappointment. Our number 17 spot goes to the Puff Stool. Its design is simple but interesting, and fighting this guy is pretty simple too. Just throw enough Pikmin to knock him over, then rush in. In Pikmin 1, he was able to turn your Pikmin into Puffmin, which was really cool because they could actually attack your captain, but since Nintendo took that feature away, I have to revoke some points. Next up, we have the Talk Stool, and basically it's the exact same enemy as the Puff Stool, but this one farts out poison gas instead. The only reason I ranked him slightly higher above the Puff Stool is because you need white Pikmin to combat him, making the Talk Stool slightly more difficult. The Baldi Longlegs has become an icon of the Pikmin franchise, especially since BD hasn't been represented in the last two games. It pains me to put it this low on the list, but nostalgia can only do so much. Design-wise, it's a giant ball on four legs, but it's giant, so I'll give it a pass there. And funniest thing is more tedious than it is difficult. Unless you're using wings or yellows, you gotta wait for your Pikmin to climb up the legs, and by the time they reach the center of the body, Baldi will just shake them off, prolonging the battle in a pretty boring way. Bonus points go to BD for being a Pikmin icon, though. Tied for 14th and 13th place are the Cannon Beetles. I didn't know which one to put above the other. On one hand, the Horns Cannon Beetle is more interactive because you gotta shove something down its hole. Ayo. Hey, 
But the Arctic Cannon Beetle has one of the coolest sublevels in the Cavern for Kings. They're basically the same enemy, so I don't mind giving them a tie. The Burrowing Snagger is arguably the most recognizable boss in all of Pikmin, being in all four main series games and even making its way into Smash Ultimate. Considering the fact that it was designed over 20 years ago, it still holds up pretty well. However, fighting the Burrowing Snagger is pretty boring. Just throw enough Pikminite's head until it retreats back into the ground and repeat the process. But I gotta admit, it's kind of funny to see him get his beak stuck in the ground, so kudos for that. The Foolix is a great callback to the original Gulix from Pikmin 1. For many, it was the first boss in Pikmin 4, and this thing took a lot of us by surprise. It disguises itself as a pile of nectar until you get close enough. Its design is unorthodox, but it works pretty well, and although it isn't too hard to fight, I'd be lying if I said and didn't enjoy the battle. Coming down to our number 10 spot, we have the Crusted Rump Rump. That's, that's a name, the Rump Rump. <laughs> Battling this boss on top of the sandcastle in the serene shorts is a moment I'll never forget. The fight itself is pretty basic, throw a Pikmin at his tail, then strike, but the design of this enemy is impeccable. Plus, that outstanding view of the entire Serene Shores while fighting him makes it that much better. In 9th place, we have the Snowflake Fluttertail. This might be a hot take, but I really enjoyed this boss. You have to keep the place warm with the fire starters as well as use them to melt the cold shield around the Fluttertail. But as you fight her, she'll constantly put up fire pits adding a second objective to the battle. Design wise, she kinda looks like a knockoff of Frostmoth from Pokemon, but like, it's a fun fight. The Sovereign Ball Blast is what the Emperor Ball Blast should have been. There's actually a real challenge when it comes to fighting this guy. His tongue doesn't have much reach, but when he screams and jumps on your Pikmin, the results could be devastating. Although he's not in the level of the final boss, fighting the Sovereign Ball Blast made me feel like I was back in Pikmin 1 again. 7th place goes to the Smoky Prog. Not as eerie as it was back in Pikmin 1, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't get chills down my spine when that first cutscene played. I honestly liked his original design better, but his newer polished design isn't bad at all. And fighting him is pretty difficult considering the fact that he can one-shot all your Pikmin in an instant. In 6th place, we have my personal favorite new boss, the Gildamander. His design is easily a 10 out of 10. Bro looks like Claude Sire and I'm all for it. Fighting this derpy boy was a lot of fun because you have to knock the gold plates off his back to reveal his weak spot. In terms of challenge, he's not too difficult, but the Gildamander does have the ability to swallow your whole squad at once. And like, just look at him. He's so happy. Before we get into our top 5, I want to give a quick honorable mention to the enemies who aren't quite mini-bosses. The Mamuda, the Icy Blowhog, the Grub Trucker, the Toady Boyster, the Tusk Blowhog, and Moss. They're all enemies that could have been a boss in my eyes, but it didn't feel right to put them on the list. Just squeezing her way into our number 5 spot is the Empress Ball Blacks. I personally hate the way she looks, but it is fitting, I guess. She's the queen bee after all, it's her job to keep giving birth. But fighting the Empress Ball Blacks is brutally hard and I'm all for it, especially in the Cavern for Kings where we have 2 centimeters of space to work with. Also, bonus points are given out here because she's the only boss that can just keep spawning in more enemies. Little creepy crawly thingies. Coming in at 4th place, we have the Man at Legs, and what can I say about this guy other than wow. The Man at Legs is hands down the best designed enemy in the entire Pikmin franchise. It's a giant mecha spider with a machine gun attached to it. How can you hate this? Fighting this guy is loads of fun, and if you stand still for a second, you'll pay the price. He's a little easier in this game since our whole squad can just ride Ochi's back, but there's still a decent challenge. Nothing made me happier when I found out he was returning in Pikmin 4. The legendary Water Wraith has returned in his full glory for Pikmin 4. Once again, he's unkillable unless you have purple Pikmin, making it impossible to deal with for the majority of the engulfed castle. To make things even harder, this is the only boss that spawns in on every sub-level, giving the player a sense of urgency to collect everything before the time is up. Unfortunately, once you get purple Pikmin, you can just straight up bully the Water Wraith, turning him from one of the hardest bosses in the game into the easiest. His design is ominous and it fits the creepy tone of the engulfed castle to a T, and the Water Wraith will always remain a Pikmin icon. Coming in at second place, we have THE boss of Pikmin 4. The Groovy Longlegs was the community's most anticipated boss for this game and it delivered. The design is a perfect 10 out of 10. You're literally fighting a walking disco ball. In terms of difficulty, defeating the Groovy Longlegs isn't too hard as long as he doesn't get your Pikmin dancing all over the place. But the lack of difficulty is made up for how much fun this fight is. Like, no joke, I had to pause the game after defeating the Groovy Longlegs because my body was going through a dopamine overload. And the music. I'm gonna have to add more than a few bonus points for having the greatest song in all of Pikmin 4 and arguably the whole series. But I think it's safe to say this boss fight's overall atmosphere makes it rank this high on the list. And for our number one spot, who else would it be other than the final boss of Pikmin 4, the Ancient Surhound? 
The build up to this fight was great, having to go through 20 levels of boss rushes only to finish it off with a giant dog. His design is very fitting with Pikmin 4 considering how many dog references there are, but I wish he had just a little more spunk to his design. The battle was easily the most challenging fight in the game without being stupid difficult. Each and every phase makes the player have to change up the strategy accordingly. The fight was a lot of fun, especially the first time because every time I thought it was over, the dog just kept getting back up and getting new powers. My only gripe with the battle is I wish the environment was a little more interesting, but majority of the boss fights in this game take place in the cave so I have no reason to complain. Bonus points are given out to the Ancient Surhound for referencing the final boss of Pikmin 2 by being another animal controlled by Lou. So did the oversaturation of bosses in Pikmin 4 take away from the overall gameplay experience? Not really, but... I think if they put half as many bosses in and gave more attention to the ones that remain, the boss fights in this game may have been even more grand than they were back in Pikmin 3. That being said, I still believe we were given a very solid roster of bosses in Pikmin 4, and I can't wait to see what the DLC has in store for us, because it is happening. I bet my life on it. If you couldn't tell, this video took a long time to make. I was testing out a new style of editing to try and keep things fresh, so please let me know how you feel about the new format. Also, leave a comment down below whether you agree or disagree with my rankings, and let me know who your favorite boss is while you're already down there. More quality Pikmin content is on the way. Thanks for watching.